it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. I'm gonna show you how to make this today. So this is a canvas board. We've all seen them at Michael's, right? Um, and on the top is, it's a collage that I made on my phone. So I just went into Live Collage, the app, and then um, just started picking a bunch of pictures, uh, sent the file to myself, so saved it as a picture, and then emailed it to myself. So let's get started on that. Um, so here's my image. I'm gonna download it, right? So it's gonna go here. Here's my little download. I'm gonna go into Design Space and Upload. Upload Image, Browse, and then you at this point you need to find your file. So here's my file. I'm gonna double click on it. I'm gonna click, click on Complex and Continue. It really, to me, it doesn't matter in this section because we're not turning this collage into an SVG file. It's going to be a print and cut, so it's gonna stay as is. So then you click continue, and then here it is. You can see it's outlined in green because if we wanted to do it as an SVG, it would just be a square or a rectangle, right? So you want this one, you can rename it here if you want to, so um, collage video example, <laughs> and then click on save. And I had just done this when my video froze. So you wanna click on here and insert your image. All right, so I used Jet Opaque um, Dark Printable Iron-On. So it's on my Amazon shop. I will link it, but you can always just find it by typing amazon.com slash shop slash the useless crafter and everything is then categorized by projects so i believe this would be under htv or something like that i'll make sure i'll link it um but i always use for dark items even if i'm putting it on a white t-shirt or in this case a white canvas board i've heard that from so many people that it is more vibrant so I figured I don't really need to test out the other one because they cost the same. And so I might as well, and I just want one. I don't really want to have two separate ones and have to remember which ones to use. So anyway, now with printable, with print then cut, we know we're limited um, by design space that it can only be 65 seven five by eight point two five so that makes it kind of small because if you ever look up the sizing for a t-shirt in this case i mean it's on a 12 by 12 canvas board so and i kind of wanted to go almost to the edge um and you can't do that keeping it as is so just like we do with the you know the big uh large off the mat um characters we're gonna slice this up in this case, it's super easy. I mean, they're just a bunch of rectangles. I'm just gonna slice it up. In fact, I mean, you could um, you could just not even use Design Space. If you have something that you don't need Design your Cricut to cut an intricate design around, then you can just make this really big and print on your paper in some other program. You can bypass Design Space because on this one, I did end up slicing it up in Design Space, um, and I will show you how to do that. But once I printed it out, I didn't even bother putting it on my mat because I didn't want to put it on my mat, send it through. I just used my um, paper cutter and cut it into um, size, you know, cut off the, trimmed off the excess, and then ironed it on. So I'm going to walk you through it. Sorry, I know I'm giving you a lot of information right now. So the first thing is I always bring in my, whatever my medium's gonna be, like in this case, it's gonna be the canvas board, right? So I'm gonna bring in a square and it's 12 by 12. So that way I can size it you know, appropriately and make sure that everything else looks good on here. So I'm gonna reduce this so that I can see everything. Um, the other thing I like to do is whenever that's my template, I like to make it lighter so I it doesn't, bother my eyes so much and then go to arrange send to the back all right so now we have our picture so we know this is our canvas board we can make this a little bit bigger so this is nice it kind of fits you know we can make it even all right so here we go and i this is something i should have done in 
my phone app, right, for live collage. I should have made this bigger, and so it would have been even, you know, it's a template, so um, it should have gone all the way over here. But anyway, I didn't do that. Okay, so now you can see, first of all, the square, um, it's giving us a warning because it's 12 by 12, and we need to reduce it to 11 and a half. Um, but we're gonna remove that before we go to the make it screen. Now our print and cut is definitely giving us an error because it's too big for print then cut. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice this up. So we're gonna bring in a square. And in this case, um, I'm just going to slice it up. Let's see, if our image is 11 by 11, um, yeah, I mean, you have to cut this up into like four pieces. So what I would do is, let's slice out these two items, these two rectangles right here. So you're gonna hit your square, it's already selected, and then hit your shift key, grab the print and cut image, and slice. So now this print and cut is 5.6 by 7.4. And if you look, you can see we don't have an, a warning image over here because this falls within guidelines of print then cut. So now this little guy is still too big, right? This one is this and it has a little warning sign right here. So again, we can, um, we can in fact use this piece Actually, I didn't need to do that. I don't know why I did that. Hold on, let me undo that. That was so dumb. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not thinking. I can just unlock this image and not rotate it for crying out loud. Okay, so I wanna make sure this extends right to the edge here, right? So I'm gonna grab these two items. Now this is another thing about slicing. So when you slice, you can only slice two items, right? So even though this picture and this rectangle is on top of a third item, as long as my mouse is only clicking two items, like it is here, then slicing will not be grayed out. So I'm able to slice, I'm gonna click on that here. So now this little guy is, oh, it's still too big. What was I thinking? I need to slice this in half. But anyway, this one is fine. 5.6 by 7.4, so I'm good there. This one's still a little bit too long. So I can take this piece and unlock it and make sure I'm slicing where I want to right here. Now, Again, now I'm in a lot of traffic, right? I've got this picture, I've got this scrap, I have my template. I'm gonna take my mouse and I'm gonna go straight down and just grab my square here and my image. And let, oh, wait a minute, I can't slice. I grabbed too many items. I think, oh, this one's too long. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it like this there and I was able to slice. So I went down the middle, my mouse wasn't touching anything except for the square and the picture. So even though there was a bunch going on. So now, here's that picture, here's this picture. I can get rid of all my scraps, okay? So we'll talk about that in a second. Um, all right, so here are all my print then cut images, okay? No warning signs, so I'm all good. Now let's go to the Make It page so you can see what it looks like. So here's the first one. And what I was saying is I did do this, this one with a lot of pictures going almost edge, you know, from corner to corner. Um, I did it like this. So I sent it through Cricut, through Design Space. I sent it to my printer. But when it printed out, I just used my paper cutter and I trimmed it like right here, down here, got rid of the black, and just trimmed it all the way around for all of them. It's faster, I just went chop, chop. Instead of putting it on my mat, you know, making sure it's on my mat evenly, sending it through, coming out, cutting, and then, you know, taking out, blah. Anyway, you get it. Um, I would only send it through, like I said, if it was an intricate design and there's no way I wanna take scissors to it, then that's what I would do. But in a case of photos, like a collage like this, it's so much faster. So anyway, you're gonna go to continue, send to printer, 
Now, this is the other thing you want to have in this case it does not matter but i always leave my bleed on um this matters more when you're doing like um, think of a print and cut of cinderella it's gonna bleed so her outline it's gonna show like kind of like a fuzzy color and it's gonna go all the way around because what's gonna happen is cricket's gonna come in and cut all of that out and it will look perfectly but you need to have your bleed on so i always hear that when people see either the black line they think it's because the bleed is on the black line is a registration mark what happens is once you print this out it's going to look exactly like this picture here on this paper with the registration mark what you need to do is you need to put it on your mat at this corner and then what happens is when you send it when you hit the c button i have a maker so when i hit the c button and it's ready to cut it will pull it in and then there's a light that comes on and it's picking up all it's picking up this registration mark so it knows to go in this far and cut around it you will not have these registration marks on your final cut so it will cut exactly the way you want it to um and i wish i had some on my desk of of actual items like cinderella it i mean it cuts so nice and evenly um, so don't worry about the registration marks. Make sure your bleed is on. All right, you hit print. Um, oh, I didn't want to hit print. What was I doing? Oh, you know what? It's not going to work because this one's not set up. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just going to exit out of it. Um, if you, I don't have it connected right now. So once you, um, once you've already printed it and it's connected here, it will, you have an option, a little button to say, I've already printed it. Now I'm ready to cut. So then you would pick your, um, the type of material that you have uh, so that it cuts perfectly. All right, I'm gonna hit cancel. I feel like that is all you need to know. Um, let me think if there's anything else. Now with printable HTV, it is, it, it's easy to use, but it's also very, oh, it's printing. Oh my gosh. Um, it's very sensitive. So jet opaque comes with a tissue paper that needs to be in between i've made the mistake before of using my teflon sheet because i love my teflon sheet the color bled into the teflon sheet and i had like a, a sticky mess so you want to make sure that you follow the guidelines for your actual printable htv um and i guess because i'm not doing a video on how to how to actually press it you see how the back you have the frame there's a divot in here so i did not use my big clam shell heat press i used my mini and all i did was i have the press you know the little gray press item <laughs> so that way i have it behind here and then i'm ironing on top like this with my mini press because you're not washing this you just need to press enough for it to stick. It does not need a lot of pressure and it does not need a lot of heat because whoever's getting this, it's either gonna go to a wall or it's gonna go in some drawer somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully not the trash, but it's not gonna be washed. So you don't, and people aren't, I mean, they might touch it a little bit, but um, it's not like it's a t-shirt that's gonna be worn and washed many times and then dried. I mean, I know you're not supposed to dry it, but some people stick it in, so you kind of worry about it lifting. This is on a canvas board, you're good. This one, I also added HTV for the date. Um, you can do that as well. It's super, super easy. I just absolutely love this project. And I think what I'm gonna do for my daughter is I'm gonna do a collage, and then I'm gonna have her write, you know, like love grandma or something, and then have it in her writing on here um, as a really, I think it's a really cool keepsake. I do that for the ornaments every year, like her writing. Um, but this is so much bigger and it can capture so much more. She could even write a letter or, you know, like, I love you, um, anything like that. That would be really cool. All right. Let me know what you think. Or if you have any questions, whatever, post them here. If you have a special request, I'm always taking special requests to do a tutorial for you. And I love it because it is, as much as I hate, that I can't share my files within Design Space. I love it for the purpose of tutorials because 
I can't send it to you. You can't cheat and just have me do it for you and then say you're going to watch the video and learn from it. You actually have to watch the video, recreate it exactly as is in order for you to be able to cut the design. So I, I think it's a great, great learning tool. So send me your specifics. You can send it to Anne, A-N, at the uselesscrafter.com. And you could tell me, my daughter's name is Charlotte, she's five, and I want this and that, and it needs to be 24 inches or whatever. I can do it specifically for that. And that's a really, really good way for you guys to learn. Okay, have a great weekend. I will talk to you guys later.